Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to get into the final game for tonight as Abyss will take on Regicide to decide who picks up this best of three series. Yeah, and I mean, Regicide, game one was all kinds of, like, bad. They looked nervous, they looked uncoordinated. Really only ZZZ on Riven had any mm -hmm. kind of blue uh, footprint in that game. Then game two hits, they just play a dive comp, rush the back line. Like, they were sacking quarterbacks left, right, and center. <laughs> uh, and they just, somehow it worked, Fish. Somehow, enough times, Abyss decided to all stand on top of each other that Regicide were able to pull out a victory with no bans. Yep. Uh, just to remind everyone back at home, for people who are just tuning in, uh, that Regicide have lost all their bans that have, uh, all their bans coming in today's game. So game one, game two, and now game three, no bans. No uh, ban anything, and this is for not being able to submit their roster in time for the first week of the OPL. And I mean, some wacky stuff has happened today. Dire Wolves absolutely pumped Chiefs game one. Next two games, incredibly close. Looked out of nowhere, looked like Dire Wolves had the better of them. They end up picking up that series. Abyss, absolutely destroy Regicide game one. Regicide come back game two, very one-sided affair. Essendon Football Club is up by 60 points against Port Adelaide. <laughs> no one saw that coming, Fish. I mean, what the hell is going on in Australia? I don't know what to say anymore. I didn't expect that one coming. Uh, <laughs> Big Bombers fan, let's go. <laughs> oh boy. Well, we'll have to decide what's going to happen in this game here because Red Decide, we kind of wrote them off after game one. We're like, yep, Abyss have to show this dominant performance again. And even now, if Abyss pick up a win against Red Decide, you go back and look at game two and be like, how did we lose that game against any other team? We would have been destroyed within 20 minutes if we played that badly. I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was. It looked like it had started in very similar fashion as well, but it was just the fact that ZZZ was able to get further ahead. Fade definitely looked more comfortable on Lisa yeah, than he did. did on Gragas as well. And K-pop looked really comfortable on Nami as Nami, well. Nami, yep. But no bands are changing. We're sticking to it. Yeah. Can no I have bands. another first pick, Zach? No bands from Regicide, so it should be first picks back for Abyss. I mean, Regicide have shown they're not prioritizing the champion. I think the one thing they have to be careful of is a Galio pick. Because Galio is a great laner, uh, is able to wave clear and things like that, is able to get around the map, uh, but he doesn't shut down the other lane. Uh, so in a tank versus tank matchups, sure, Galio does fine, but ZZZ isn't playing tanks. He's played no, he's full damage Jarvan as well as a ribbon. So I think that this is something that you actually genuinely have to be worried about now and not pick Galio. And they've even gone away from the Zac pick because they know they don't prioritize yep. it. They've taken a lead. <laughs> At least it's picked up here for Abyss. That should be Seb's champion. But you never know when you have people like Pabu and Rosie on your team. There's no way it's a top lane release. It sucks. Well, when she was first release, she was. Yeah, exactly right. And now <laughs> she actually can't survive on the mana. Really? Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen top lane release in years. I have no idea. How Every now and again, out. I dust it off, pull it out, <laughs> see if it works. <laughs> no, nah, still garbage. All right, put you back. <laughs> we might just say go back to the <laughs> fix of little really sin as well as Ash. Uh, there are quite a few picks that you like to ping out from time to time spawn. One of them is Smite Alistar. I don't understand that Top pick. Top lane Tigress Dance Udir. <laughs> that's, Although my, now, that's one of my picks. Really? <laughs> All are, now with the new Death Stance. Ooh, feels good, Fish. Feels good. Oof. I reckon it's on its way back in. No, I've stopped playing it since they took away Red Potion. That Zephyr was, was a real death of Top lane Tiger Dance Udir. Yeah. Can no longer get Swifty Boots as well as... No, what was the item that had Tenacity on it? Was it Zephyr? Zephyr. Yeah. No longer the you item where yeah. you used, as if you're an AD carry and you had five items, I'm oh, sorry, sell six, you'd boots. sell your boots and get Zephyr. Yeah. Yeah. That was the yeah, one. As soon as they took <laughs> Zephyr out, you could no longer play Tiger Stand top lane with you. Dead. And Abyss have completed their first draft phase here. Varus as well as Gragas picked up here to go with the Elise pick in the jungle for Seb. He had a much better game on Elise than he did on Zach. His Zach game is uh, questionable. As Tigo was pointing out. Kind of felt like he was playing for Regicide. <laughs> At times. Uh, the big thing here for me, however, is the fact that they're going to go Gragas top lane. Uh, so I think that this is a good call because Gragas is a, still a tank. So Pabu going to be well and truly at home on it. But does trade a little bit better with carries at the same time. So does. Uh, the change up has been made here. No Galio going to be taken into the top lane. Yeah, but Abyss are like, sure, you can still have your Vladimir. We'll give that to you. Let's see if they give over the Jarvan as well. Although, is it really all that much different, Jarvan, Riven? I think. Can't you just flash Q on people with uh, Riven in the exact same way? You, you can't you... lock them down in a big arena. Sure, but you can get two stuns, two AoE stuns, Fish. I believe. I'm on the hive train. 
Get behind ZZZ. Paradise is an absolute monster. ZZZ is a machine. <laughs> But I do like the Uragus pick here for Abyss because now if they do go for that run at you, Team Comp, at least he's going to split everyone. Just pops his ultimate, everyone's disappeared. You're not on top of each other anymore. I, for one, am shocked that they have banned Jarvan. <laughs> I did not see this curveball coming. That's going to be the first ban from Abyss. Remember, Regicide, no bans here today. Imagine if he played top lane Vladimir. That would be even better. Oof. Just really open up the matter. Show you don't give a damn. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, just get Camille in there and said you can't lock down five. At least you trap one in the arena. But it shoves everyone else back. Kind of the opposite of what you want to do. No, nah, that's true. Come on, mate. Theory craft properly. We're serious on this show. Are we? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, then I look over at the analyst desk and I see Michael Hing is Hing and I go, well, that's thrown out the window. We're done here. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Hing is his... Uh, Pushing shit uphill tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's on there with uh, a very, very loose team on Adrasti, who have uh, struggled to find nice things to say about our teams. Struggled is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> One of them legitimately said that Seb's playing for the wrong team. <laughs> but we have gone through the next few bands. Ranks is the last one that came out from Abyss. Brom has been picked up by K-Pop, so he's going to play three different champions here today. Get a little bit of a feel for his champion pool as one of the rookies coming into the OPL. The Lulu game was bad. The Nami game was good. See if he can split the difference here on the uh, Braum. There was a G2 perks joke in there somewhere. I don't <laughs> think there was. <laughs> we are a bit of locked in Tom Kench as their support of choice for Rosie. See what their final pick is going to be. Regicide will have the final pick for ZZZ. You'll know by then if this, uh, he actually should already know that it's a Gragas top lane. <laughs> Luch will pick up Oriana. Good matchup into the Vladimir. We already talked about this. He had the option of going at last game and went with the Syndra. I thought it was a mistake. This time Oriana should be able to do a much better job of shoving out the lane. See whether he starts with Dark Seal again, Suman, because uh, that was a bold pickup. I think Shield would be the much better matchup in this. And a tank. Ooh. Say it ain't so. ZZZ, picking up the Nautilus. There better be a wit end on that champion because he nah. is taking a top lane. Top lane lease in. <laughs> no, no, no. Vladimir top. Seelman's picking up Nautilus. Man, we're going full LPL here today. Ah, so ZZZ <laughs> going to actually pick up the Nautilus. Trying to think back to my AV days. Not my AV days, like the days he was on AV. Uh, whether he was actually ever really a big Nautilus player. Definitely was in the meta back then. I'm sure someone will tweet at me and let me know. Nautilus is one of the... More linear top lane champions to play. Max E, press E. Yeah, <laughs> press E. Your auto attacks lock them down. <laughs> if you're in trouble, press W. <laughs> Get lots of health back. Throw your Q in the general direction of the enemy team. But if you hit one, press R. <laughs> there are some uh, <laughs> things to watch out for here. Does he go Grasp, which is a little bit more trading, or does he go Courage of the Colossus? Mm -hmm. Because uh, that would be a lot more for the team fight. Or do you um, go Thunderlords? You don't. Uh, <laughs> does he go triple ring build? Or does he still go for something like the uh, Barmy Cinder, which, of course, has been nerfed? Mm -hmm. So I, I think there is going to be some different things we've seen. I haven't seen uh, Nautilus played in the top lane no. position since the changes have come through. Definitely seen him in the support position, but there you're pretty much like Blitzcrank light, kind of. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see whether he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gragas because Gragas, as I said, the reason you pick him is because he's kind of the early game tank that shuts down a lot of the carries in the top yep. lane. Uh, so I like the change up, the fact that he's flexing his muscles, showing he does have tanks if you're willing to pick something like a Gragas into it. But it's a decent matchup for Gragas in the top lane because Nautilus used to be famous top lane as a tank because he could wave play with his E. Now they've hit the mana cost of that E, Gragas can still do it with his Q just fine, especially with Triple Ring. Nautilus, even with can Triple Ring, go can triple struggle. Ring? I mean, I don't know. I've not seen it. Maybe <laughs> you go Meditation, Triple Ring, and all your mana problems are fixed. Oof. Because uh, that's what every other top laner does at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, triple ring or meditation? Uh, Twitter Rusty will let us know which one is more busted at the moment. As <laughs> he's off the <coughs> desk here tonight. They actually nerfed meditation. <laughs> did. I was a huge fan of it. I used to pick it up in 80 carries. It was yep, so good. That's what I was a fan of it as well. Um, but now, to curious to see what he's going to go. He does start with the ring start. We have seen a couple of notices go more towards the Garant Shield. Oh, here we go. Here we go. No, absolutely not. <laughs> So the other thing that we have to point out is the fact that TK has been picked up by Rosie, Tom Kent. Uh, good answer to the Ash, as well as the Brawl. And Vladimir, you eat someone up and run away. 
Get him How away from the answer economy. to Vlad? Vlad runs the 80 carry. You pick up your 80 carry and run away from the Vlad. <laughs> and I drop it Vlad down somewhere. <laughs> I feel like Vlad just follows you, Tish. <laughs> I don't know whether that is the case. I'm going to check in. Or you, you eat the Vlad of me and then you pick him up and throw him away from your 80 carry. <laughs> One of those two things. Uh, Something like that. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Seb, looking to actually start on Raptors with Elise. Not one of the, it's not the best start. We'll get a small leash from Luch. Oh, we might actually get one from Pabo as well. This will make it better. I mean, Big anything barrel. is better with a barrel and an Oriana Q over the top of it. So that actually be a really strong start for Sam. Let's yeah. see how he uses that. Got a leash from his top lane as well as his mid laner. Meanwhile, Fade will start on a red buff with help from ZZZ. ZZZ has gone for Grass for the Undying on his Nautilus, whereas Courage of Class is picked up by Pabu. Ah, probably he's got a carrot horse, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Lacey yeah. picks up the Bond of Stone on Tom Kench. There's a different life steal for Raid whenever he can tag someone with it. K-pop's done the same thing with his mastery choice. I mean, anyone that can range tag, you know, either through the tongue lash, well as that Winter's Bite, going to be good with the uh, Bond of Stone. And Chenny Boy again, going for Warlord's Bloodlust, not opting for further of battle. He seems to like this mastery spell a lot more. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's a movement speed. I know that when you play Tune at the moment, you pick it up purely because, you know, not only do you get like a thousand damage back for a damage crit, but also the fact that movement speed is very good. You can see that Suman's also made the change up, goes towards the shield in the Orianna matchup. So he was actually really comfortable, that tells me, in the Syndra matchup, and maybe a little bit of a mistake for Luch to mm -hmm. throw that gauntlet. Oriana matchup here. Luz should be very comfortable for him as one of his signature champions. As long as he gets blue buffs. So this, actually, this whole counter strategy hinges on the fact that Ori is going to get blue. If you do not get blue buff as the Oriana, it is still a tough matchup to go up against Vladimir because he just uses his health as a resource and trades incredibly effectively. Top side of the map, Pabu holding this wave just off his turret. Gonna be farming just fine for a mix of auto attacks as well as Riptides. Seb has actually done the drive by. Will he go top though? Seb is right behind top lane in Fog of War. I mean, I feel like ZZZ knows he's there because he warded a warded Raptor pit. However, it's going top side of the map. At least he's on top of the We're ZZZ. watching bottom lane. Nah, bottom nah, lane's Rosak. Yep. Here comes Lee Sin though. This is why we're watching bottom lane. Goes in, tags Rosie. Fade has to jump out, takes the turret shot. So in the end, both ganks not successful. Luch has already used Ghost. Should be watching mid lane. <laughs> and they know the fact that uh, Seb is on their Raptor pit. Yep. So Luch in this mid lane, keeping up the CS. Human has been pushing back quite nicely. Doesn't get the third attack of Thunderlords there. <laughs> Seb now wrapping around again. They might go for a dive onto ZZZ. Yeah, this is actually really risky. Pabu takes two turret shots oh, for free. They miss. Missed the cocoon. Pabu goes in. Now he's going to take on the turret. ZZZ flashes forward. Can't get the auto attack down. That was so close, however. Uh, and you can see that now ZZZ going to miss out on a lot of the CS, but still gets all the experience. And uh, Pabu had to burn his flash in response. So yep. nice withstanding that game. That could have been a kill top side of the map. Ooh, here we go, Seb. Connects to Seb. He's going to be able to pick up the Skull of Crab, but Spade's going to continue chasing down so much damage. Teleport immediately being channeled to one of the spider links. That's Pabu. Says the way for him to get back towards the top side of the map. Tell you whether he goes for it again. He really wanted that Pabu. Uh, not Pabu, Fade. Uh, so Pabu's gone back, picked up Triple Ring. ZZZ has yet to go back to base. Wants it to hit the turret. Doesn't want to give the freeze away for free. He knows if he's there. He's not Pabu's going to really struggle to hold that. <laughs> Really nice side steps, both out of Raid and Rosie there. Mm -hmm. They're just going to try and freeze this move like just off the turret. Chenny Boy and Kepa. Fade making good use of the time he's chucked out Seb to take away Raptor Camp. And Luch is running out of mana in this mid lane. Suman a little bit low, but has another health potion if he needs it. Yeah, exactly right. As well as the fact that Luch has shop and Suman hasn't. So hyping up the return of Luch. But Suman in game two was able to get his better. And at the start of this game, is looking the goods as well. I mean, people were also very excited to get Suman into the OPL, of yep. course. He had a good start on XL5. He was one of the standout players. 
And when you played for the Chief Special Forces, it looked exactly the same. And as uh, Tegon said, the only reason that really didn't work out with XR5 was uh, purely communication. Uh, of course, Mandarin, native speaker, as is, I think, Fade and ZZZ. Mm -hmm. Chenny also speaks it, although he's also very fluent in English. Uh, so, Suman certainly looks more comfortable here. Speaking of Suman, accidentally dodges a cocoon there. Doesn't see Seb coming, pops the Sanguine Pool very low, but gets back to safety without blowing up his summoner spells. Yeah. We'll get shoved in on mid lane, lose about eight creeps here, but shouldn't be too bad. Actually sticks around for it. That's a really brave call, especially given the fact that Luke still has ultimate available. See whether Luke is able to make him pay. You can see that they're actually arrowing for Suman as well, making sure that they have vision of where Seb is. So really, the whole team in the early game trying to get Fade. behind their mid laner. Fades behind Luke, not level 6 though, has to be careful. Jumps on top of him, Shockwave on his own body, locks Fade in, but the tag gets him with the Q. Meanwhile, bottom lane's easy to see here. They lock down Rosie, pops the great health. He's going to die first. Riptide being charged up towards Seb, will be able to knock him up. Rosie's still alive, he's hit enough Chenny by on the side, spits him out. Couple more arrows into the catfish, will take him down. First one picked up by Regicide. Yeah, really nicely done. That's actually a proactive teleport play coming out of ZZZ because he knew it was not available for Pabu, who had teleported back to the top lane. You can see now he's actually stuck around as well. They've trapped Raid underneath oh, his no. turret. And they're slowly pushing the wave in. No one is coming to save you, Raid. The poor Varus is just stuck Although there, but they decide actually looks not like to go for they it. They are going to be merciful. Uh, no, they're not. No, here they go. It's easy Sorry. to see locks it down. Arrow splits the wickets. This raid will get Ooh. exhausted. K this is actually a turret. really bad dive they're going now. for Seb first. Locking down with a concussive blow. Shenny has to use the heal. Forced to back away. Raid now trying to return some fire. So they kill the Elise. Don't get a kill on towards Raid. Yeah, in the end, they make it work. K-pop exhausted very early, which made me nervous. However, Chetty just burns the heal and is able to pick up two kills for his squad. So all of a sudden, 800 gold up. Top lane will bounce against ZZZ. And he is a full level behind now, as well as 20 CS. Yep. But does get Chenny in a relatively good position. Now you have to see if Pabu is able to do enough with the advantage he has top side of the map. A level above CCC. His teleport's coming back off cooldown soon. He's taking red buff away and has a wave bouncing. So, this is cheeky. He has the potential to impact the bottom lane with his teleport soon. And that red buff should keep him ahead in this lane. He can now trade against CCC without any consequence. Yeah, completely agree. That was actually a nice pickup. Getting the fruit as well means that he's now full health, full mana. Uh, the wave was pushing back against. Uh, ZZZ as well, which is why Pabu felt like he could actually leave him at the last hit anything in that wave. So now it's set up very nicely. And he has all. He can actually all in right now. Potentially do a lot of damage to the Nautilus, although he's still very tanky. Here we go. Time. That was an interesting mechanic for ZZZ. Still able to escape somehow. Pabu, body bomb, flash, locks him down. The shield the Nautilus is just too strong though. Yep. Without that W, Pabu can't finish him off. So Pabu forces him out of lane, but ZZZ had already made the creeps hit the turret, which was kind of what his objective was in that whole trade. Now we'll go back, get some, himself some potions, just run back to that top lane. Pabu is certainly ahead, uh, but would have lacked the kill there, and trading flash is not necessarily the best thing when you are ahead. Yep. Fortunately, his ultimate connects it after the dredge line hit the wall. Yep. Is he still able to get away from that? He's about 30 CS up, so probably happy with the current spot he's in. Has a chance to make a play bottom if he decides to teleport, and he will push this wave into the turret as well, making it difficult for ZZZ. I mean, he does have a chance to get down there, but there's no really good wards. That's the only one you're seeing on your screen right now. Would put him behind the turret, but still, do you really want to dive a Braum and an Ash that have ultimates available? It's hard to execute upon. They're going to have to get down more than a couple of members Ooh. here. Then it's a whole party now. Good communication. They get that ward out. Now that ward has been controlled now, so not able to see the fog through the fog of war through that tri rush. But right to say, still holding on to a small lead here. About two kills, but nothing too much has happened this game. Shuman still looks very comfortable on the bottom here, sending up toe to toe against Luke, something he was not able to do in game one. Yeah, game one was a wash in the mid lane. Now, actually looks very good for Sumi picking up the Vladimir. You have to say that they have been attacking his champion pool. Always banning away the Echo, always banning away the Zed as well. But, looks at home on the control majors. What's a four? 
Okay, he's looking for it, doesn't take the Q. Maybe he just wanted to force the lane up. Potentially, Luch does have blue buff now, so as you mentioned, we'll do slightly better in this lane. But again, nothing much happening. Very quiet between the Wiss and uh, Regisy. 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 Yeah, good. And they have Ooh. kickback set though, locking him down. He's gone into repel mode, looking to try and get back down with the human, flashes away. That was actually a flash kick, really nicely executed by Fade. But the rest of the team wasn't there in time to back it up. Uh, Kenny, you need to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Trouble exhaust on to K-pop. Curious decision from Rosie. And now the teleport comes. Oh, this is the advantage. Kenny. Rosie Does get stopped. Gets three tongue lashes in a row on towards Chenny boy. K-pop forced to use the ultimate. He's been a first of all big shockwave. Lost down both Chenny as well as Fade. They're trying to kite back. But Suma's on the wrong side of the wall. Chenny boy is going to fall. Double kill picked up by Ray. Suma's trying to go for a five. Pops the ultimate. Might be able to take down Rosie here, but that's about it. As he's going to get slowed up by the Orianna. Raid will continue chasing. Forces a flash out of the Vitamir Abyss with that team fight. Yeah, it's a one for three. However, they do get the teleport out of Pabu. And it was ZZZ that stops that. So it's going to be a full channel. You can see that ZZZ actually has a teleport advantage now. So if they get back into lanes, might be able to make something happen. But let's have a look at this again. I feel like that was kind of Chenny's fault. He was just sitting there attacking a ward, not even orb walking. And you can see that that means K-pop gets stunned up, gets taken down nice and early. And this big shockwave comes out as well from Luke. But really, got to give props to Suman because he's stuck with the play. This is the 1v4 that he's marching into. And uh, he nearly even picked up Seb's kill here as well. So that was actually really nicely done. Backs away, only has to use the flash for it. And still, even though Abyss pick up that fight, there's still only about 500 gold in the lead, so nothing too drastic for Regicide at the moment. Blade of the Ruin King has been picked up, though, by Raid. It's a good item house by for Varus, and Regicide gonna work on the first Inferno Dragon of the game. Cloud Dragon has been picked up. See, the big thing for me is the fact that Suman is still able to get himself a kill, is still 100 CS, and does not look kind of countered by this matchup at all. And that's not what you expect. You expect Vladimir to actually have a hard time in the early game and to get bullied out a little bit. Um, so yep. I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, can they actually stop down, uh, stop the Vlad this time? They have things like the uh, Tom Kench as well as the Belly Bop, as you mentioned, to get him off the back line. But really hasn't seemed that bothered at all by the game so far. And Vladimir today has just been kind of uncounterable when it gets past the 20 minute mark. I hate Vladimir, he's just a ridiculous champion. <laughs> and Abyss, so far, have not seemed to find out how to deal with Pabu again. Vladimir out of that laning phase, and Pabu, yep, is trying to take away Red Buff. He is the jungler now. What an annoying top laner. I mean, this is going to be twice that he's taken away two Red Buffs from Fade. It's like teleport advantage. Yes. I could go bottom. Nah, let's stay in lane, take a Red Buff. I mean, he. Yeah. He did use his teleport, got stopped. Yeah. Uh, right now there's a teleport advantage actually for Regicide for the next couple of seconds. Now will know that uh, Pabu has done the sneaky invade again. This time, however, it's going to be three members heading towards the blue. Pabu cutting them off. This could be a little bit of a 3v3 fish. Could be. Pabu is right behind Nautilus, knocks him back. That's actually a nice ult coming out from Pabu. Luch is going to get knocked up by ZZZ, but he's dead. Brilliant little play from Pabu. Yeah, a little bit strange, however, that they didn't want to fight that. Uh, you can see that Vladimir nearly got his Spirit Visit, has boots too. Uh, and Lee Sin had absolutely everything available. Instead, they just kind of sacked ZZZ. You see Raid and Rosie's pulled up as well. So potential for that Time Kench ultimate to, you know, Whoa. persuade them not to go in. Arrow connects onto Pabu. Shockwave will lock He's back troubled. to Vladimir. He is dead. Seb picks up the kill. Yeah, and that's what you expect when you see this pickup. Being able to block the Vladimir. He used this to, uh, pull too early. That was a big ultimate, but just no follow-up. They shot an arrow from base and then kind of Fade and K-pop were there. That will mean first turret's going to go down. It's a mid lane turret as well. That's big deal. Uh -oh. And Chenny, what are you doing? Gets locked down. Nice kick. Knocks Pabu into the rest of his team. Okay. Uh, ZZZ is actually behind them. That's a deep teleport flank. Is it going to be enough? They eat up Seb. Fate's now in trouble, getting incredibly low. Seb has escaped. They tag Luch with the Sonic Wave. Chenny trying to kite back, but. 
this just more fan of that fight. Yeah, exactly right. And all of a sudden, big top lane wave crashes. First brick going down, 3,000 gold is the advantage right now for Abyss. And they're going to stick around and try and defend this turret as well. Oh, Teleport oh, actually now comes. coming in from Pabu. Pabu from downtown looking for more fights. He's a little bit slow, but he's uh, still going for it. Does have his flash available. Can catch a wild Jenny boy. Oh, the back lines. Here comes the Toad. They pick up a kill there. As that was a lot of flanks coming out from Abyss. Certainly was. Tom Kench uses the ultimate, gets Seb in behind them. Kabu gets a teleport play, and this time it is Abyss actually drawing very far ahead. And as we said in game one, it wasn't really about the individual plays, although Luch was certainly playing well. It was more about the macro decisions, and you can see this time around making the right calls at the right time. Kabu does have flash as well as body buff available. Instead, Abyss looking to try and take down top lane out of turret for themselves. Suman is still split pushing in the bottom lane, will crush a wave there, but not able to get any damage in that bottom lane turret. Pabu is still top side. ZZ is at half health. Pabu would probably take a fight. Yeah, if he wants to. definitely would. I mean, it's still very hard to kill uh, Nautilus at this stage of the game. So instead, you see that they're both just going to trade creep waves as tanks are wont to do at times. And uh, really, this now comes down to can Suman get onto the back line and really carry because a couple of disastrous team fights have left the team regicide in a pretty big gold deficit and uh abyss looking much more comfortable we've got a four thousand so about three thousand five hundred gold lead for abyss nothing too major no small lead nonetheless uh-oh don't tell anyone i mean the problem is tom kench is also here and they've kind of given it up because uh, everyone's collapsing on that position. Schumann's able to pick up that way, but nothing else. Raid felt, now feels a little bit more comfortable walking back into the lane there. I mean, has Tom Kench, has Elise at the Krug camp. So waiting in the wings. I don't think he's at 100 to 0 potential at the moment, given the fact that Vladimir has only bought magic resistance to get through the laning phase. Regicide's going ZZZ middle. Now he's going to rotate back top as Pablo was pushing out that lane. So top lane is alternating, just catching waves. And I mean, that's really what this game has become. Uh, no team really ready to throw the big team fight. Um, so instead, Here they're just goes. waiting for everything to come back available. Pabu. I don't think Pabu really wants it. You never know with Pabu. <laughs> Drag him back up in 40 seconds, Fish. I'm sure you'll get your fight then. Just be a little bit more patient. Can't wait any longer. Get him, Pabu! Faye is going to be walking around the side here. You're right, they're probably going to posture for that dragon fight. It's up in about 20 seconds. ZZZ has no teleport and is still top lane. So long walk has to begin now. It's actually going to be blue buff invade first. I don't really think if you're Regicide, you use anything to defend this. Because you don't even need blue buff. Taken away by this. Seb gets the smack down for that. Lush already has How his own. this you do fight for. Smite will be back up for Seb in time. ZZZ has made his way all the way from the top side of the map. But Abyss bursts it down now. Regicide can't really react unless they go for a steal. Fade is behind the pit, so they are split Ooh. in three directions. But they got Chenny Boy. Good knockback from Pabu. Separates him from the rest of the team. But Chenny's not dead. They didn't focus down the anti carry. Seb comes down, picks up a kill, somehow still lives. Dredge line does not connect, but Suman's already in the back lines. Regicide, they're trying to turn around this team fight. Rosie will eat the Vitamin and spits him back out, but he's going to fall as well. That's two kills. Make it three as Rosie falls in a sonic wave. K-pop stuns up Raid. He flashes forwards, and K-pop pops over his wall and says, how about an uppercut, buddy, as they take down four members of Abyss? And Regicide again, with one of their members being caught out, are able to pick up a team fight, and Rosie was eating Suman during that? I mean, what a bizarre team fight, Fish. And they're going to grab another Fire Dragon. They have it back to pretty much even in gold. 2,000, 20 minutes. Woo! And the Vlad's got three kills again. And the next Dragon spawn's going to be another Inferno, which uh, if you were Abyss five minutes ago, you'd be happy. But right now, not a great situation to be in when Regicide picking up the first Infernal Dragon of the game. And the other big thing for me was the fact that ZZZ still looks really comfortable on a tank. Played the role of a frontliner perfectly there. Let's have another look at it. Pops Chenny back in. They don't target him. They don't focus him down. And then you just have this huge frontline of ZZZ, K-Pop, and Suman just continually moving forward. And Rosie, not back peeling, is actually at the front of the comp diving. And uh, that means that everyone else is going to fall down. And 
unfortunately cannot run away quick enough the side of Abyss Esports. Great flashing forward as so K Pop just pops over. He's like, how about this? I think you just die there. I don't think you use a summoner spell. No. The team fight is over. Even trading one for one, not really going to be all that worth it because if Raid gets caught out in the next three minutes, it's because he doesn't have flash available. And again, K Pop in this match, so much better on the Brawl. Yep. In comparison to his first game, this is so much better for him. Fade as well, once again showing he's very comfortable on the Lee Sin. Big shield coming out from K pop again to stop the knockback. Yep. And uh, all of a sudden, Raid. Caught out by a wild vampire. Tagged from downtown with the arrow. Tom Cage is going to jump in amongst the action, bringing no one with him. Sable slowly chase down Suman. Gets the blood rush. They run away, allowing him to not regenerate any health there. So smart move from Seven Rosie. They will eventually pick up the kill. Yeah, good shutdown kill on the top side of the map. It looks like they've gone for a turret dive. It's going to work out. Fade's going to pick up the kills. Easy Z nearly falls down. Fade, Fade what are you Fade, doing? You're taking your turret. Oh, almost falls to that. <laughs> it takes up the minion. Flashes and comes oh. back in. Very curious, but still, they get the kill on the turret. They get a kill on Pabu. Yeah, two for one trade. They're able to pick up a turret. Trade in favor of the Regicide lineup. Chenny also hit the arrow from downtown to pick himself up an assist. Downtown. I heard it's a good town. Downtown? I said downtown, <laughs> didn't I? It sounded a lot like downtown to me. You don't know what the bloody hell you're talking about. <laughs> Get focus on the damn game. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to listen to you say downtown. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> but still, Abyss hold on to the lead, so they're about 2,500 gold ahead. Which, if you're Abyss, you'd be happy with, but with the last few team fights going the way they have been, Regicide would be very confident picking another fight. I mean, they certainly would be. And it just gets back to the point where Vladimir, at this stage of the game, has two items, boots two, he's not got a care in the world, he's going to have easy access to your backline. We've already seen that, you know, Gragas, Tom Kench aren't enough to keep him out. Uh, that means that in about three and a half, four minutes' time, when the dragon's back available, you need to worry as a best because mm -hmm. you cannot give up another fire drake. And again, Fade's going towards a more aggressive route, going for more Mount Mortius. Hex Drinker as well as Cleaver. Ooh. This is awesome. This is the three item damage lease in. And you just need a Witsen and Nautilus to round things out for this team, but that's. Arrow, here we go. Getting into the back lines. Raid has been kicked over the wall. Eaten up by Rosie. Shockwave only lands to the K pop. That's not the ultimate they were looking for. Pabu's now stuck between the entire team. They're slowly locking him down. Abyss trying to come to his aid. Shields will come out for Moriano. Pabu's forced to flash away. Now Regicide fighting under a turret. Rosie is their target. Winter's bite will lock him down with the concussive blows. And again, Regicide pick off Abyss. And honestly, it looks like the meta right now is 80 carry, four tanks, run at the opponent. That's what we've seen every successful team do. Chenny actually heals to get a, close the gap just that little bit faster. Yep. We're looking to see if they can get the engage going towards the Good trench line coming out from ZZZ, but he's going to die for this one. Tanking up the turret. He has been ignited as well. Only had heal. The rest of Regicide decide they're not going to push any further forward. Suma now being locked down here. Fade is in the back lines, making sure he doesn't get caught down by Sam. Suma goes back and he's like, come here, Raid! I'm going to take you down with a single transfusion. You didn't see that one coming. But Shockwave's back up and available for Luke. This has been such a long team fight. That one's up. Seb will die as well. Suman gets a shutdown. Luke wants this fight. Has double buff. Suman is going to get the blood rush soon. Run straight at them. Locked down and will die to the tongue lash. This is a weird fight. And they're still <laughs> going. Rosie's trying to teleport into the back lines. Brings Pabu with him. Takes a little sip from his drink and knocks them away. <laughs> what is going on, Fig? They wanted to fight, you know, just having a good old biff. They were. This Punched is just turning other. into a brawl. 6-3 <laughs> is the Vladimir now. Baron is available. They don't have an AD carry. They don't have a mid laner. But because Seb's dead, there's not really all that much they can do apart from get control over the area. And I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, paging Benji, we need a new uh, Kyla caster. Yeah, no, that's definitely Spawn not happening. One is dead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I'm lost for words. This series has, I mean, there's an old saying, Fish. Never argue with an idiot. They'll drag you down to your, their level and beat you with experience. Uh, regicide, not idiots, uh, but they are the scrappy team fighting team. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, Abyss just want to play scrappy team fights at the moment. They have absolutely no care of getting vision over an area, of trying to bait, of setting up sideways. They just want to run in headfirst 5v5, and they're not doing it well at the moment. 
which is really different from their game one play. Regicide is beating them with experience on the scrappy team fight front, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. If I was running into this game as a beast, I would have just ban out Vladimir and be like, all right, well, they don't have that champion anymore. Let's see what they can do instead. Uh, instead, it's... it was a J4 they targeted, and as you said, the Nautilus is certainly doing fine. He's out. He's put up out. a Luge, but the rest of his team is taking away an Infernal Dragon. Arrow fires out, misses. He's trying to jump in. Faye kicks back Seb, knocks Rosie up as he tries to catch him in his mouth mid-air. ZZZ still alive, will eventually fall to Luch after a very long, prolonged chase. Yeah, got the flash out of Luch, however, does fall down, so good job from the Abyss mid laner. However, giving up an Infernal Drake for just one kill, don't know about that, Suman. However, caught yeah, out Fish, it. what the heck is going on? He gets caught out, he's probably going to die here as well. Pops the ultimate. Is he going to die? die? Probably not now that the ultimate's going to give him back 799 health. Chenny Boy is going to slow up Pabu, make sure that Abyss can't retreat nice and easy. And they so have eyes on the Elise, so this could be a one-for-one -one trade oh, again. Boy. They're chasing very far. I mean, I don't know about this. And it's Bitsy Spider's trying to run away, but Suman's just a little bit too fast for that. Good cocoon, but it doesn't matter. Air Drake OP instead. There's a little bit of a team fight happening mid lane. K-pop being caught out. He's trying to run flashes away. He gets away from Luch and Rosie. They'll lose their mid lane in a turret. Look at this. I mean, Fade is like, Hello. I'll flank them one before. <laughs> don't, don't sweat it, guys. He was looking I've for got Ray. this. Doesn't get the invisible Q off as Pabu. It's not happy about this, Leeson. Charges on forward, and we're watching K-pop run out of a base. Let's go. <laughs> Get back into the fight. Your duty's not done yet, soldier. <laughs> we're back nearly equal to how many go uh, kills per minute. Hello. And we can see that uh, actually going to be Baron the focus now. Oh, Seb's not up in fi for five seconds, so Registar's saying they have no smite. Let's go. Probably back in base right now. I don't know they if are. they do it quick enough. Gragas is here. Seb is up. Woo! Separates the team. That's Uses the ult very poor, early. Poor ultimate from Pabu. Doesn't accomplish anything except for damage. The collapse of the Stuman trying to lock him down first. He goes to the Sanguine Pool very early. Two members still on the Baron. ZZZ trying to keep them locked up. He's in the back lines taking a lot of damage. And Regicide will take Baron. They lose ZZZ. Now the goal is to get, get the heck out of the pit. They will lose two members. Both K-Pop and ZZZ go down. But Regicide get Baron, which is crucial. Great call. I mean, they did exactly what they needed to. The two members that don't do any damage to Baron in the Vladimir, in the Nautilus, actually just keep them busy outside of the pit. The rest of the team actually finish off the objective, then they flash over the back wall. Beautiful play out of Regicide. They grab themselves a 28-minute Baron for only two members. And that's something I really like about Regicide. They might not make the best calls, but they're always very decisive about it. They go in, they go one direction, and that's it. They don't stop. Abyss do react accordingly. They take down the top lane in the turret. So despite Regicide's Baron attempts, they're still 3,000 gold ahead. Now the question is, can Regicide use this Baron to their favor? QSS has been picked up by Chenny Boy, as you saw on your screens there. So we'll be able to mitigate some of the crowd control that comes out from Abyss, and there's quite a lot of it. Certainly is. However, with Baron buff, you have to think that that bottom lane out are going to fall down. That will get them back within about 1,500 gold. Then it becomes, what else can we break on this map? Double Infernal Dragon, Vlad scaling off the chart at the moment, Fish. Woo! And Chenny is much closer to raid this time around, who's had to literally build a little bit of everything to try and deal with this team composition. Edge Drinker, Ninja Tabby, Execution is calling, you name it, he's got it. Welcome to the variety bucket build. They actually want to use the Tom Kenshaw to get in behind here. I don't know if they know that there's uh, oh, got multiple people here. Let's see if they get down there in time. Oh, we have three on four to kick things off. Fade trying to get back to base with the Empower Recall. Will he get there? That's not locked out by Raid. He's going to have to try and make the great escape happen here. So many members of Abyss chasing him now. Fade's actually committed. He's flashed away. There is He's just trying ghost. to waste as much time as possible. Not going to be enough. He runs into a wild Gragas who just knocks him back into the rest of the team. Burnt Flash of that, which only forced to use the Ghost. And he actually cancelled his recall there, Fade. Mm. He would have got out as well. He was the first person to recall. Uh, Chenny in the brush was able to get away, as well as uh, K-pop. So a little bit strange that Fade stuck around if the call was very clearly get out. It's a great movie. Get out? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've never seen it. Oh. It's now. It's going to continue chasing on towards this fight. They actually caught him off. Orianna's heading up the river. Just so tanky though, but I mean, that's disgusting. Ash Arrow is coming. Nails Suman. Great shot by Chenny Boy. 
Uh, Regicide, though, taking it a little bit easy, even though they have Baron buff. Uh, they have ZCR split, uh, ZCR, ZCC split pushing in the bottom lane. We're not in the LPL anymore, <laughs> Fish. Come on, come on. ZCC is split pushing in the bottom lane. Will be dealt with by Rank. He's actually running away. I mean, the Tom Kench is heading down. I would run away from that as well. There's still a big Varus. Lots of sustain. I reckon he's got him. So Regicide grouping up towards the red side of the jungle. So it seems like their next attack should be that bottom lane in a turret. I mean, it's honestly wherever they can find four plus members with Suman there, because he's level 17. He's yep. an absolute monster at this stage of the game. Where he just takes absolutely no damage in that little scuffle. And as long as they have ZZZ and Suman on the same screen, they should be able to win a team fight. It's just whether Abyss want to give them one. Whether they actually can slow down the pace of this game, use Tom Kenshaw to get side waves in the right position. Top lane is pushing out. That's why CZZ has gone back to base. Another Infernal Ooh. Dragon. Triple Infernal. That is a chance here for Regicide. Final Elemental Dragon has spawned in their favor. If they don't catch that top lane wave, eventually it will be big enough to crash into the turret. But I don't think 12 seconds is enough. As Human decides, yeah, I'm just going to... Ultimate available. X. Protobell straight into the team and takes so much damage for him. Suman has to be careful. He might actually cost his team a team fight nah. here. Still alive, gets 905 health back. Looking to go for more transfusions in the back line as Spade jumps in, severs the target. He'll be the first to fall. Chenny picks up that kill. CCC leads the team fight, taking out most of his team's damage. Chenny, though, jumped on by Pabu. He's going to fall next. Pabu's gone down. CCC straight on top of Luge. Going to lock him down for the rest of the team. But Suman is going to fall. And Abyss have finally found that team fight that we're looking for. Fade will die. Raid picks up a few kills. Double kill goes over towards Luge. And that's exactly what Abyss needed. Miss execution, however, from the Regicide lineup. K pop nearly saved that team fight by dashing forward with the unbreakable door. However, Fade missed a couple of crucial cues. Suman wasn't able to get a second round of spells off with that pull. So they lose their first team fight, and Abyss are going to be able to push into the base. And that's really what cost that team fight as well. Suman walking up to so many members of Abyss, popping his uh, Proto Belt, and just being forced to flash away afterwards. Yep. And then without Proto Belt, without Flash, not being able to get on the back line successfully, that was still a great engage out of ZZZ. Um, but let's take another look at it. So Suman has to run away here. Ooh, big shockwave nails him, but he doesn't die. And have a look at what ZZ is doing on the front line. But that's the first Q that missed. Fate's still not really in that team fight. And then this looked like it was still salvageable. And the turnaround damage from Raid is absolutely good. Huge. Kenny walks forward. K-Pop tries to protect his AD carry. But unfortunately, just Regicide not on the same page. Look how split their members are. Fate just doesn't even want to be in here. Misses another Q on to loot. That means that they're able to clean up the back end. Yeah. Anyway, we're walking way too far forward in that fight. So what's a miss execution coming up from the side that has given a bit. Nice 4k gold lead. Probably still chasing out both Suman and K-Bob. Infernal Dragon was picked up by Abyss, so they deny three dragons from Regicide. Give themselves a nice little booster as well. And now all of a sudden Oriana picks up a death cap. You can see that the items are starting to be completed by Raid, so he's shredding through people. Uh, until the Death Cap comes through on Suman, going to be pretty difficult to win a fight. Although Arrow from downtown, don't know what that was really aimed for. For the trees. Well, he hit them. So, good job. They're still going to keep most of the members mid lane. They only have Pabu bottom lane. He has teleport available, and Baron is up in the next five seconds. And I mean, if Pabu can keep ZZZ out of the fight, that's a win already for Abyss Esports. So you can see that they've actually double watered the pit, making sure there is no vision there. They'll do it very quickly if they start it up. Although Looch just wants to be able to pump out this damage right now. Damage items picked up by Fade and Dead Man's Plate adds a little bit of damage on top of that as well. Pabu says, all right, let's go for a tank battle. You and me, ZZZ, fisty cuffs only, barrels and hooks may be allowed. You can see that no one really wins that, especially not the fans at home. What are you talking about? That's a great fight. It never stops. That's exactly what we want. They run out of mana. That's okay. You can still auto attack. 
In that case, Miranda should win it's if it's just auto attack. So I assume it seems like he's being caught outside of him. No ultimate to burn to buy at this. And Suma's being forced to use his own. So they're going to wait for that cooldown to come back up. And immediately look at this. He got towards Baron. This is like, all right, this is our time. Yeah, exactly right. Teleport would have to come in now if there's any chance of them really fighting for this one. It's a little right. bit too late. It's going to go down. Can they win the team fight afterwards? They decide they're going to look for it. They do stun up Luch with the arrow. K-pop follows up with the knock of a fate solo in the back lines. Ultimate coming out from ZCC, lands it towards Rafe, but the crowd control that Regicide are using, just not at the right time for their carries to deal damage. Big shockwave. Mega shockwave coming out from Luch, locks down three members, and Abyss are slowly cleaning up this team fight. Yes, Harbour will go down, Seb's gonna fall next, and Chenny is trying his hardest to kite back, but it's Luch and Raid, the duo carries, that are gonna be enough to finish off this game for Abyss. And just think what could have been if Suman had his ultimate in that fight. Instead, he burns it early again, and it means that Abyss are able to turn onto the Baron. They clean it up. Really, this should be game. 18 seconds left on Fade. He's going to have to put in some work. Creep Wave's going to be there with Baron buff. It's already Super Creeps. I don't know if there's enough time, Fish. I don't think there's enough time either. They're going to even tank up the first few shots. Raid even he heals to get back into turret range in time. First turret falls. Fade is going to be back up. It's up to Raid and Luch to defend this. Two on one. K-pop, six seconds. That's the they kick. tag Raid. Shockwave's going to be able to connect. They knock Raid back, but they're just auto-attacking the Nexus. Raid still alive. Too Not many super minions. And Abyss will eventually take down Regicide. Two one. But you can see from the looks on their face, maybe not the 2-1 that they were expecting. I mean, that was hard work. Vladimir got to late game again, but a couple of crucial errors out of Regicide, and they do gift that game back over to the Abyss squad. But really, if you Regicide, there is so much upside you can take from this. And we ha went into a series with no bans. Yep. Giving away priority pick after priority pick. And sure, Abyss did come out victors, but... That was incredibly close. And again, every game matters. Regicide take away a single point here today, which could prove crucial later on in the split. Especially for Abyss now, they're starting off the season with two points against arguably one of the weaker teams in the OPL right now, just newly promoting from the OCS. Not a very comfortable spot if you're a team that wants to try and finish top five of what Abyss say, <laughs> top three in the OPL. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, they had so much confidence with Luch coming back, now picking up Rosie as their support. But at times it looked good. And I think that Rosie and Luch, for the majority of that series, did their job. But there were still certain points that they just could not deal with the team comps that, Abyss, uh, that Regicide were throwing at them. And uh, in the end, they scrape home by the skin of their teeth. It, it almost felt like that. It wasn't even them trying to scrape home the win. It was the fact that Regicide were not able to pull off the execution of those team fights properly. Vladimir being out of position twice in back to back team fights when previously, even though. Uh, even though Abyss was so far ahead in gold, they were still the ones that were losing team fights. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, when you give away, I mean, positioning like that, when you gift Vlad the ability to get through to that late game, it is going to be very difficult to win those team fights. Uh, and once again, really, Suman, one really questionable proto belt forward, one ultimate that was unnecessarily uh, used onto the AD carry, is what really swung that game back. It certainly did, but still high hopes for the Regicide players. Both Fade yep. and K-Pop started off very weak in the first game, came back really strong, especially on the lease and the different support champs you saw uh, from K-Pop as well. So it's good to see their starting in the OPL. Abyss still pick up the 2-1 victory. And to break down this incredibly long day we've had here today, let's send it back for the final time to the analyst desk. Thank you, Fish. Thank you, Spawn. Well, it has been indeed a marathon day to kick off split two here at the OPL. Uh, Abyss able to take that series 2-1. But let's talk about game three, T-Gun, because, I mean, when we look at the pick, the pick man, the draft, no Zach, no Gallio, and just a very long game. <laughs> <laughs> they've, ruined, they've ruined the global percentages. <laughs> I'm sure before today, Zach probably had a 100% pick ban rate. Something like that, and yeah. And Abyss set out today to just ruin things <laughs> because they hate percentages. But you look at the, the broader <laughs> series, Rusty. Is that why? No. <laughs> so you say, Damn percentages. I was, I was absolutely going to move on from that. But, uh, no, let's just focus in. What do you mean they hate... No, no, let's not. Um, you've been roasted enough today, Tegan. It's been a long uh, day, Tegan. <laughs> it has indeed. A long, <laughs> but, but, interesting day. But let, 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 let's talk about this as a series because uh, Abyss would have gone into this and thought we can 2-0 these guys. These, they're, you know, a regicide, newly promoted into the OPL. You know, we've really upgraded, they would say, a lot of their team members from last split. So for them to drop a game against Regicide, they're going to be disappointed. But for Regicide, 
I mean, they'd be pretty happy picking up a point, right? Yeah, I mean, most people expected them to just get very handedly 2 0 so they got to go away from this feeling pretty happy. They, mm. The first game was a shocker for them. They, yep. they have to look back at it and go, we went from getting demolished in game one to winning game two and dragging three uh, game three out into an extremely close competitive series. Mm. So they have nothing to be ashamed of from yeah. today, in my opinion. And potentially winning game three as well, right? Small yeah. mistakes in the end is what cost them the most. K-pop game number one wasn't the best. He got better in number two. And number three, he was playing Braum and it felt like he was more at home with what he was meant to be playing, right? It was more him and the whole team did look just that little bit better. We didn't get a carry from top lane, but he still did his parts. ZZZ looked fantastic on the Nautilus. So Regicide have a lot of positives they can still take from this series. Abyss, they can take the win. Mm. They can still take it back to the drawing board personally and say, well, look, there was all of these things that we should probably improve. Well, speaking of Abyss taking the win, Jake Spontoberry is currently standing by with victorious top laner Pabu. So let's throw it over to him now for the interview. Thank you so much, Hingers. I am standing next to the victorious Pabu, who is actually quite a little bit taller than me, so I'm going <laughs> to get off my tippy toes. Uh, Pabu, coming into this game, you guys are talked up a lot about what this new roster was going to do. The additions of Luch and Rosie uh, were supposed to push you guys into the top four. I mean, 2-1 versus Regicide. Is that what you expected? Uh, no, the first game went exactly as expected, but after we lost the second game, Su Suiman's Vladimir is really, really good. We didn't expect that, and it, it totally caught us off guard. We struggled to play versus it. And yeah, this is this is not nearly what we wanted to show, but the first game is... So we, we showed that, and we're hopeful that we can replicate that in further matches, but yeah, this was a lot harder than it should have been. All right, cool. So the Vladimir may be getting the better of us, but talk to me about this roster then, because yeah. adding Luch back after a split of suspension, getting Rosie from the TM squad, uh, how are they meshing together, and what is the hope of this squad? Well, some teams have looked at us and described us as Direwolf's Light, which is to say that we have five really strong players in, as individuals, but we may struggle on the macro side. And I think that uh, hopefully if we can iron out all of our decision making, we should be able to show ourselves as one of the stronger teams in the OPL. All right, cool. And last off yourself, you're still, I think, the one of the only fly in, fly out players in the OPL. How's high school going? You're looking after yourself? You're making sure you're staying rested? Uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty well, actually. Uh, I've been getting a lot more sleep this split. Uh, we used to do two scrim sets every day uh, before, but we've cut that down to a lot more VOD review, and so I've been getting a lot more time for my school and sleep, so this split's been a bit nicer to me. A lot of teams are actually saying that they've changed up their approach to practice, that they felt that they were playing the game a little bit too much and not really learning from their mistakes and changing it. Is that something that Abyss is also looking at for this split? Yeah, we think that last split we were grinding out too many games, and our practice really needs to be more quality over quantity. We think that if we're just playing scrims and just going through the motions and not actually taking information out of it and learning properly from it, it's not worth doing. So we've decided that as l if we review our games more and focus more on actually making sure we go through our objectives and do what we need to do, it's a lot better. All right, final question. ZZZ pulled out a Riven top lane. You've promised me one this split. Am I actually going to get it or are you just not a man of your word? Oh, uh, maybe, but the meta doesn't seem to really like Riven right now. I think I think it was a bad pick there. It didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, it certainly did not. Congratulations on the victory. I hope that we continue to see the Abyss Boy improve. Let's throw it back to Hingis to close out the night. Thank you very much, Jake, and congratulations again to Pabu, who says he's getting more sleep this split, but we are on day one, so who knows? Like, I mean, can you really say you're getting a lot of sleep on day one? You've had you got your one sleep in. Anyway, look, I, I don't mean to roast him because he did win. Let's take a look at these pick bands. Again, uh, Regicide lost their bands because of a competitive ruling, but uh, the Jarvan was banned out, and they, they've gone to the Nautilus instead. Talk me through that uh, that thought process, Tegan. I almost wish they went back to Riven. Yeah. Um, they were showing that they were playing through both ZZ and Suman. And when you put him on a tank, you really have a one-threat comp because I don't think anyone really expects them to play through Chenny Boy. He was doing a lot of damage, it felt like, that game, and he did a lot of damage the previous game, but it really was just between Suman and ZZ. And they put him on just a potato-y tank top. Mm. Yes, you can get ahead in it, but it feels like the wrong choice. Like We go back to game one. Papu said Riven didn't do anything. He killed him in lane. Looked like he won the lane to me, yeah. so I mean, go back to it. For what it's worth, right, I'll give the idea of picking Nautilus to Regicide in game number three. In the second mm. game when he was playing Jarvan, he was engaging for the team, but he was playing a champion that was able to carry and engage, mm. which is rarely going to be seen just in the champions that have played top lane. Sure. I feel like Nautilus is a good middle ground for the engaging part. Riven's all about the damage and carrying part. And game two was the perfect Regicide top laner in Jarvan because it can do both. Could they have went to something like Camille then, which is sort of Absolutely. sort of like Jarvan as well? Uh, that, that's something they need to go back and look at is if they're going to look for those sort of intermediary between carry and engage, mm. look for things like Camille, look mm -hmm. like for things like Jarvan again Fiora. instead of going to just one extreme or the other. I think Fiora was 
banned out, yes. I believe. It was banned yeah. out again. But anyway, let's let's take a look at this uh, this dragon fight because I feel like Regicide and Abyss were both. Look, I, look. Okay, what I want to say here: a strategy <laughs> for Regicide was let's get Vladimir Fez. Let's take a look at this dragon fight because uh, Vlad gets a couple of kills. They definitely do, and of course, it all starts off with this very awkward dynamic of Abyss in particular, wanting to go forwards at the same time as not defending their teammates. There's these moments here where Rosie goes rogue ops and goes forwards more often than he defends his teammates. So Luch dying, Seb completely flanked off, and. For me, this is the biggest problem with the compositions and how they play it around the objectives. They actually didn't play front to back of this. They weren't protecting their carries. They were playing two different fronts opposed to that. And that mm. could have been remedied a lot better if they just kept the people that deal damage alive. I yeah. think if um, Regicide also killed Seb there, that would have been a huge game-changing moment. They still had a pretty clean fight there, but Seb skidded away on a roughly one health because he rappelled down on top of Chenny Boy mm -hmm. and killed him with just the skin of his teeth. And if, if they had cleaned him up, I would have been expecting them to just close out the game from that sort of position but instead they just kept having these sort of sketchy team fights where I honestly didn't know who was going to win going into half of them mm. and and it was just really evident with, with sort of the decision making from both teams well there was also a mid lane team fight I want to look at because Abyss was kind of pulling ahead but this was for me the team fight that uh, allowed them to I feel like close out the game uh, so take me through what's happening here um, so Abyss sort of engage sort of don't engage on Suman and they try to blow him up can never really blow up a Vladimir, especially if he gets his ult off, so they just sort of start running it down. Now from this point, Regicide look like they're winning. Abyss has sort of blown all of their cooldowns, now Regicide start over chasing, instead of just playing from the people in front of them, they start thinking we need to kill their carries. Yeah. They should just be killing the people right in front of them. Go for loot, instead Suman splits off, goes for raid. Now Suman's blown all his cooldowns, raid can auto attack his ADC, kills him. Fade misses a bunch of Qs in the fight, which is going to happen as Lee Sin. Mm. But that's why they're struggling to win these fights, is they split up, try to take... Instead of taking bits and pieces, they try and go for everything at once. And if you mis-execute at all, if you miss a couple of these Sin Qs, it doesn't seem like it should be a big thing, but when you're trying to take everyone down instead of just what you should get, it becomes really evident and really, really catastrophic for them. On the contrary, of course, for Abyss in that last fight, Raid and Luch played it incredibly well. Yeah. Their mechanics shone through really nicely, so it was actually very impressive to watch them play. Rosie also able to peel a little bit more. So that was much more what we want to see from them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've talked about a bit about this game being even, but I want to take a look at some graphs because I want to see if it's reflected in the actual numbers. So let's take a look at the gold that was collected by each team. And uh, I mean, it doesn't look too far ahead for Abyss there, right? Yeah, I mean, as far as gold differences, the majority of this was probably earned right at the end of the game, which mm. means the majority of the game, they were probably pretty even, which they were, as, as we know, because we're watching the game, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, you do that. I would say that the, the biggest discrepancy here for me would be between the mid laners. Um, mm. But by the end of the game, Vlad was, I believe, five items, uh, which mm. is pretty much where you want to be on him. You, you don't really care once you get past three items. That's pretty much your zone. So. It, it strikes me as a game where Regicide were in it up until the very end. They, Absolutely. they weren't, you know, gone and just yeah. took 10 minutes to roll over and die. They tried their best. Well, that's the story this tells, right, Tegon, mm -hmm. is that considering they lost the game, the gold this close, like, they could have won the game. Yeah. It was actually mm -hmm. just that close reflected through a gold graph, not even the champions, not even how it was played out. It was actually possible. Yep. Yeah, just actual, um, you know, numbers going into your brain. I, mean, um, I, didn't, I didn't think they'd take a game, but... <laughs> Here we yeah. are. <laughs> Let's take a look at as well at damages, uh, damage dealt champions because uh, I want to see if that... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's, you'd uh, say that's where the difference is. Yeah, that's just, it's probably quite... I mean, the other, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty gross. Um, I mean, we've seen previously there's been a lot of damage dealt to a lot of tanky champions, but I think there's a, a tank, tanky champions on both sides. So... It's just, it's just a big mismatch. Uh, particularly with this, though, the Void Staff decision from Luch is what allows him to do all of this damage. He went right. second item Void Staff when everyone was rushing Spirit Visage. Instead of going for something that kills carries, he opted into killing the tanks, doing damage to them. And there's a lot of damage done there, but that was also just smart item choices by this. Mm. We also have to go back to, and we've said this earlier, damage dealt to Vlad. They're doing a lot of damage to Vlad, who really absorbs it quite readily and just sort of heals it all back up. So while it is very jarring and very different from one team to the other, we have to sort of take into account 
one team had some really, really hard tanks to just absorb damage a lot better than the other team. Well, it was a... Uh, well, Abyss finally took that series 2-1, but it was a promising start from Regicide in many ways. Uh, let's look forward now to tomorrow, and let's bring up this schedule, because tomorrow we have two more massive games of League of Legends for you. And uh, as soon as I come... Nope, all right, well... <laughs> I think they're bringing it up right now. There, there have been some kinks today, and I apologize for that, but we are working on them. Um, anyway, look, but let's get some final thoughts from you guys before we go to this schedule. Um, Rusty, Regicide, do you think they're going to get relegated? What do you think now? <laughs> relegated? I Off never said they no. would. No? I uh, definitely don't think that they would, but that's more of a question of who is going to be contesting them below Regicide right now right. above all else. From what we did mm. see, I still think they have the capabilities of being a good team. They need to just work as a team, mm -hmm. similar to what Abyss said. They're five Absolutely. good players, but are they a team just yet? I like that you asked him if they're going to get relegated after one game. Well, no, because I think they played quite well today. Be better he, than people expected. He wanted the answer to be no for good yeah. reasons, yeah. but the way he asked the question was just... It was, really it was a leading question. <laughs> All right, a well, leading question. Look, let's move on because I feel like the schedule is ready for us to look at. So tomorrow's games are going to be... Sin is going to be taking on Legacy, and then we're going to see AV taking on your boys TM. And uh, give us a bit of a sneak preview of that, Tegan. How are you feeling for that? Tomorrow? I'm feeling good. Hopefully yeah. we don't end as late as we have today. Sure. For the sake of both my sleep schedule and People maybe some People getting sweet value out of their free OPL. What are you talking Absolutely, about? Absolutely, but I like sleep as well. <laughs> you and Pabu both. Yeah, you and Pabu both. <laughs> um, all right, well, uh, I think that is about it for us today. So I'd like to thank T-Gun and Rusty for joining me here on the desk. And we'll see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. for some more a OPL. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Lanes, he's, he's here. They lock down Rosie, pops the great health. He's gonna die first. Rip time being charged up towards Seb. We'll be able to knock him up. Rosie's still alive. He's eaten enough Chenny on the side. Spits him out. A couple more arrows into the catfish. We'll take him down. First one picked up by Rips. And now the teleport comes. Oh, this is the advantage. Chenny, Rosie. Does get stopped. Yes, three tongue lashes in a row on towards Chenny Boy. Came to off. Forced to use the ultimate. He's in the first of all. Big shockwave. Lost down both Chenny as well. Spade. Then trying to kite back. Assumer's on the wrong side of the wall. Chenny Boy is going to fall. Double kill picked up by Raid. Assumer's trying to go for a five. Pops the ultimate. Might be able to take down Rosie here, but that's about it. This is going to get slowed up by the Oriana. Regicide, they're trying to turn around this team fight. Rosie will eat the Vitamir, spits him back out, but he's going to fall as well. That's two kills. Make it three as Rosie falls to the Sonic Way. K-Pop stuns up Raid. He flashes forwards, and K-Pop pops over his wall and says, how about an uppercut, buddy, as they take down four members of Abyss? Protodol straight into the team and takes so much damage for him. Suman has to be careful. He might actually cost his team a team fight nah. here. Still alive, gets 905 health back. Looking to go for more transfusions in the back line. A spade jumps in, severs the target. He'll be the first to fall. Chenny picks up that kill. CCC leads the team fight, taking out most of his team's damage. Chenny, though, jumps on by Pabu. He's going to fall next. Pabu's gone down. CCC straight on top of Luge. Going to lock him down for the rest of the team. But Suman is going to fall. And Abyss have finally found that team fight they were looking for. Fade will die. Rain picks up a few kills. Double kill goes over towards Luge. And that's exactly what Abyss needed. Ultimate coming out from TCT. Lands it towards Raid, but the crowd patrol that Regicide are using just not at the right time for their carries to deal damage. Big shockwave. Mega shockwave coming out for Luch. Locks down three members, and Abyss are slowly cleaning up this team fight. Yes, Harbour will go down. Seb's going to fall next, and Chenny is trying his hardest to kite back, but it's Luch and Raid, the duo carries, that are going to be enough to finish off this game for Abyss. And first turret falls. Fade is going to be back up. It's up to Raid and Luch to defend this. Two on one. K-pop, six seconds. The they kick. tag Raid. Shockwave's going to be able to connect. They knock Raid back, but they're just auto-attacking the Nexus. Raid's still alive. Too Not many super minions. And Abyss will eventually take down Regicide 2-1.